Okay, I'm convinced that none of us really like storms. Now, there are people who are storm chasers and they want to go find out how storms work and they're very intrigued by the process, but none of us as a majority like storms. Metaphorically in our life, in our relationships, most of us do not like storms. But storms are necessary for the earth to produce what it needs to produce. Storms are even useful for the earth to correct itself. Some of what we're experiencing with climate change now and the storms that have existed and persisted um, and have been created are the result of the earth working toward correcting itself. But storms still suck. <laughs> um, literally, some of them literally do. Tornadoes, hurricanes. But they are always the sign of a new day, ironically. After the rain, there's a, a different sound and a different feeling. Um, those who study ecological changes, earth changes, storms, scientists who study the way the earth works will tell us that lightning is necessary for clearing the air and thunder comes as a result of lightning. So I wanna to speak to your personal life, your relationship to your partner, to your kids, to your parents, to your friends, to the people you love but don't necessarily like, to the life you live, your work environment, your friends who are on the other side of the spectrum, theologically, philosophically, politically. The storm is always a prerequisite, it seems, to a new season. Shift happens and when it does, Sometimes it's chaotic and noisy and windy and even seemingly destructive. But sometimes the deconstruction is what leads to a reconstruction of something new. If you were to walk into a delivery room and not know that uh, the sounds you hear and the smells you smell and the things you see are necessary for new life, you would think that it's destructive and it's evil and you would perceive it to be something terrible if you didn't realize that that was the prerequisite, the requirement, the necessity for a new life to come into existence. The same is true for the storms in your life. We find a story in the Gospels where Jesus speaks peace to a storm. But we notice that he doesn't speak peace to every storm. And so I wondered about this concept and this idea. And maybe we can throw this around in this video. What if not every storm is necessary and the storms that are not necessary you can speak peace to and you can cause a calm to come? into immediate effect. But what if the storm is necessary? So I would say to you in your life, in your arguments, in your discussions, we won't call them fights with your partners. We'll call them close, intense moments of fellowship. In those things that develop in your life, those seemingly storms, maybe it is incumbent on us to investigate and to determine whether it's necessary or not. And if it's not necessary, can I speak peace to it and instantly see peace be still? And if peace is not being still, then maybe the storm is necessary. I say this to you because a lot of times those who especially believe that prayer changes things and you don't see the thing change, you can become extremely frustrated with the fact that it didn't change. Let me say not everything is instant. We are a microwave driven society. We are instant broadband, fast internet access. We want access, we want to be able to Google it and know what it is now. But maybe we know a, a whole lot and we understand very little. 
and the understanding may only come through the exercise of the process. See, we want to go from the promise into the promised land, but sometimes because of our human existence and our human nature, what we would think is the natural flow of this world, but maybe it's just the conditioning, but we want to go from the promise to the promised land, but maybe there's a process in between that makes us prepare to receive the promise. Same as a baby. There's a concept, conception, then there's the incubation, the germination, if I can use that agricultural term, the germination, the growth process of this this concept that becomes a fetus and that grows and becomes this thing that can no longer live in the confinement, but for the nine months that it's in utero, it's in the process of becoming a being capable of living inside this thing we call the world. So in your life, if you are, if you have a concept, that concept may not overnight become capable of living in the promised land. So allow the process. The same is true for our storms. Allow the process. Receive the light and the dark, knowing that both are necessary. Without light, you wouldn't appreciate dark, and without dark, you wouldn't appreciate light. And in the light, you work, and in the dark, you rest. They're both necessary. Neither one are evil or good. So we move out of the space and the place of a need to judge and we move into a space and a place of becoming more accurate in living this life or this thing we call life. Maybe Jesus along with the great sages and teachers and preachers and leaders throughout history are teaching us something. When they tell us that all things are possible and when they tell us to live a life that's peaceful and when we're shared that shared with us the truths that are powerful to bring about peace in allowing, let go. The Beatles may have very well sung the most spiritual song of our time when they said, let it be. There will be an answer. But right now, you have to let it be. The walk of faith is not a walk of certainty. In fact, it may very well be the opposite. The walk of faith may be uncertain. And maybe that's what faith really is. The strength to live fully through the certain and the uncertain. So whatever storm you're going through, whether it's a storm in your relationship, in your job, in your belief system, whatever that storm is, it may not be necessary. And so maybe a prayer or a meditation could be the immediate medication that's necessary to instantly stop the headache or stop the chaos or stop the anxiety. But if the storm is necessary to clear the air, to make it more... Um, easy to breathe. See, the cure from your dis-ease may not be immediate ease. It may require a process. When you break a leg, you break an arm, sometimes you need physical therapy, healing, to get dexterity back. But you will recover. And in the process of recovering, you might possibly uncover another part of yourself. Unless the egg is broken, the bird never uses its wings and it doesn't know it can fly. In the confined space, there's a defining space. So in your life, the storm that's not necessary, when you speak peace to it, when you pray about it, boom, it may happen. But the storms that are necessary will remain until they've done the job they came to do. So welcome the stranger. <laughs> Even the stranger you dislike, welcome the stranger into your life. And in doing so, you might very well be entertaining an angel and be unaware of it. Peace in the midst of your storm, 
in the process of your storm and peace from your storm. Namaste.